Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Nucor Corporation, ticker symbol NUE, NU. We're looking at Nucor today because the business is a dividend aristocrat of 49 years, meaning that Nucor is only one year away from becoming a potential dividend king. Dividend aristocrats are members of the S&P 500 who have consecutively increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 25 years. Dividend kings are also S&P 500 members who have consecutively increased their dividends for each of the past 50 years. If Nucor can become a dividend king, they would be in very select company alongside other businesses such as Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, among others. Additionally, Nucor is one of the top performing stocks over the last year. Over the past year, their stock price is up 79.5%, which is just insane. Currently, the business is trading for $166.87 per share. We want to analyze Nucor today to see if they have what it takes to become a dividend king and to understand what are we missing. What could the market have possibly discovered about this business this past year that's led to this kind of dramatic performance? So over the last five years, Nucor is compounding at a rate of 18% annually. The business's stock price is up more than six times from their lows in March of 2020. Over 10 years, Nucor is compounding their stock price at a rate of 12.5% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, Nucor is compounding at a rate of 10% annually. Keep in mind again that they've been increasing their dividend payouts throughout this time frame. And so their average dividend yield would be in addition to this compounded annual return. Throughout the past 10 years, they've paid out about a 2.9% dividend yield. Currently, though, because of their dramatic run-up in their recent stock price, the company is paying out about a 1.2% dividend yield. So again, these dividends would be in addition to this compounded annual return. So it's likely that Nucor is outperforming the S&P 500 over the past two decades or so. So Nucor is about $20 below their 52-week high. They're up very significantly from their 52-week low. A little over 2.5% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short. And Nucor is a large business. They have a $52 billion market cap. For more background about the business, Nucor Corp manufactures steel and steel products. The company also produces direct reduced iron for uses in its steel mills. Their operations include international trading and sales companies that buy and sell steel and steel products manufactured by the company and others. The operating segments of the business are steel mills, steel products, and raw materials, and the steel mills segment derives the maximum amount of the company's revenue. So Nucor Corporation was incorporated in 1958 and is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. One interesting piece of trivia about the business is that the company was featured in the book Good to Great by Jim Collins. If you've read that, that potentially gives a short primer on the business. And if not, it's a book that you could check out. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Nucor based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Nucor, even prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, was earning above average returns on capital, although those were declining coming into the pandemic. Since then, the company's returns on capital have seemingly skyrocketed. In 2021, the company earned 44% returns on capital, and that decreased slightly in 2022, where they earned 40% returns on capital. This came as commodity pricing really exploded and went through the roof with supply chain issues that were brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Averaged out over this time frame, Nucor is earning about 25.5% average returns on capital, which are more than three times better than that of a typical business and about one and a half times better than that benchmark we were looking for. So this is a very strong check to start things off here on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. 
This metric is going to be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. Over this time frame, we really get to see the dramatic growth of the business post the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, as a commodity producer, they were significantly benefited by increased commodity pricing. So while it looks like the business was trending down coming into 2020, since then the company has rebounded very sharply across all of these metrics. Over this time frame, their revenues are up by about 75%. Their net incomes have more than tripled and their free cash flows are up more than five times. So this is massive growth here across the business. This is a strong check on metric number two. And it's especially great to see such strong free cash flow growth because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is what that business is going to be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to pay down debt, make acquisitions, buy back share, pay dividends, or reinvest back into the business. So again, very strong growth across the board here for Nucor. This is another check here on metric number two, and we're two for two to start things off. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Nucor on a per share basis. So here we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. It's not surprisingly that they've seen huge earnings per share growth with their earnings being up so dramatically over this time frame. Additionally, and it's a potentially an attractive sign for long-term shareholders in the business, Nucor has bought back about 16% of their shares outstanding over this time frame. So when you purchase a share of stock in a business, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying company. So when a business buys back stock and decreases the amount of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which ultimately increases the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. So while Nucor has been buying back shares in all five of these years, they've really ramped up their share buybacks since 2020. That's not necessarily surprising given their higher free cash flows. However, the company's stock price has been up pretty dramatically since then. And as a steel commodity producer, this business is going to be cyclical in nature where they're going to have periods of booms and busts. So even though the company has been buying back a lot of shares recently, you want to make sure that they're doing so at attractive valuations when the company is trading below its intrinsic value. And it looks like an attractive use of their capital relative to some of their other opportunities or other means of returning capital to shareholders. Either way though, with their share buybacks and their huge increase in their earnings, this is a check here on metric number three as their earnings per share are up very significantly. Metric number four is gonna be very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, for almost the same reasons as their earnings, with very strong cash flow growth and a decrease in their shares outstanding, we're seeing very strong free cash flow per share here for Nucor. This is another check on metric number four, and so far through our first four metrics, we are perfect with four checks. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't wanna be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are gonna be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over the last five years. With their huge recent increases in their free cash flows, Nucor has been paying down their debt position and it looks like they would very easily be able to support this debt load. That would have been the case even if we were taking their more normalized free cash flows coming in before the COVID-19 pandemic as well. It looks like Nucor is very strongly cash flow generative relative to the debt they're employing in their business on both an average and a current basis of their free cash flows. So this is another very strong check here on metric number five, and we are still perfect through five metrics. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this would potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Nucor. Right now, Nucor has a total enterprise value of about $45 billion. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. And it's gonna give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Nucor were a private company. We learned in our previous metric that the business produced $16.5 billion worth of free cash flow over their last five fiscal years, meaning that in an average year, they're producing about $3.3 billion of free cash flow. 
So when we divide their $3.3 billion of their average free cash flow by their $45 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 7% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. And so this is a check here on metric number six, meaning that Nucor has done it. They are a perfect six for six on our select six analysis. When we look at the company on a current basis as well, over the last 12 months, the business has produced $8.1 billion of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $8.1 billion of their current free cash flows by their $45 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about an 18% yield. Again, that would be significantly above the yield of where the 10-year treasury is at. It looks like new is potentially attractive to dig in and learn more about on both a current and an average basis of their free cash flows. However, just because this is a check here on metric number six and the company goes six for six on our analysis, this doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go buy the business. Instead, this analysis serves as a holistic and beginning understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about the company. It's often the case that with these commodity producers, because they're going through boom and bust cycles, that when they're in their periods of booms, It looks like the business would be potentially attractive based on a number of quantitative financial metrics and vice versa during their down cycles. It looks like these businesses would be potentially just as unattractive on these very same metrics. So it's worth utilizing an abundance of caution here, especially with a commodity producer. However, Nucor does have a pretty strong track record as a business. And there's some interesting things that we still have to cover about the business in just a moment. So then as a bonus here, we're taking a look at Nucor's dividend profile. Right now, the business is paying out a 1.2% dividend yield. And again, Nucor has a track record of paying out increasing dividends for each of the past 49 years. So they're only one year away from becoming a dividend king. However, it's really easy for people to make mistakes by blindly chasing dividends, dividend yields, or dividend track records. So it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business and to determine whether these dividends are well supported by the abilities of the business to produce earnings or free cash flows. For Nucor, we want their dividends to be supported by their free cash flows, and they've easily been able to do this in all five of these years. Their highest dividend payout ratio came in 2020, and that was still under 50%, which is pretty reasonable for a business like Nucor. Since then, as their free cash flows have really exploded and gone through the roof, their dividend payout ratio is extremely low. And even if this is a particular boom cycle for the business and these free cash flows are likely to level out and potentially decrease into the future, it looks like they would very easily still be able to support their dividends and that the company should have little to no problem becoming a dividend king. So it looks like Nucor, even operating in a cyclical industry, given their extremely long track record, should not have a problem becoming a dividend king. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Nucor, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last five years to give us a more normalized perspective of the business's ability to produce free cash flows, especially because their free cash flows over their past couple of years have been significantly above their historical averages. See. Then we're using growth assumptions to project these average free cash flows out into the future. So if we assume that the business grows these average free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually over the next 10 years, and use a terminal stage for the 10 years out after that. Then if we add in their tangible book value and we were ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from Nucor, it looks like a fair value for their business is right around $159 per share. So that's about $7 below what their current stock price is. It may come as a potential surprise that Nucor doesn't look like it's an absolutely screaming buy here. This again has to do with the fact that they're a commodity producer and that steel commodity producers go through boom and bust cycles. It's important to understand that this model assumes that they're going to have the same valuation multiples that they have today at the end of this 20 year range as well. Also, with these more cyclical businesses, you want to be careful not to make mistakes by investing at the top of a cycle. So especially given their recent run-up, it's really important that you would have some sort of fundamental insight into the steel market globally, and especially the U.S. steel market and and Nucor specifically. Understand whether or not this is going to be potentially sustainable for the business going forward and what their future free cash flows are likely to look like. A discounted cash flow model really depends on the predictabilities of a business's future free cash flows. And so Nucor, as a cyclical commodity producer, may not have as predictable the future free cash flows as some other types of businesses will. So it's worth being mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. 
and before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. In just a minute, we'll talk about our recap for Nucor, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those around the key points for either a potential long or potential short thesis of Nucor? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for Nucor, number one, Nucor's investment in DRI production will reduce conversion costs, therefore driving margin expansion. Number two, Nucor's leverage to scrap processing via its acquisition of David J. Joseph and natural gas drilling via its partnership with Incana will allow the company to remain profitable even during periods of high input cost volatility. And number three, Nucor Sound Financial Health provides the company with flexibility that will help manage sees growth opportunities and make strategic investments to help control input costs. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the company, number one, Nucor's operations are exclusively concentrated in the United States, which limits the company's ability to supply higher growth markets. Number two, Nucor will struggle to drive margin expansion due to the continued impact of global overcapacity on pricing. And number three, elevated import volumes will continue to weigh on Nucor's performance. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key points for the business. Now it's time for our wrap up. So in summary, Nucor went a perfect 6 for 6 on our Select 6 analysis, earning significantly above average returns on capital, growing their business pretty massively over the last five years, buying back 16% of their shares, looking like they don't utilize very much debt relative to their average and their historical free cash flows, and looking potentially attractive in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury on both an average and a current basis of their free cash flows. It also looks like the business will be able to support their dividends and quite easily become a dividend king, which they only need one more year of dividend payouts to do so. However, just because the business is a select six stock doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go buy the company. Again, it's worth being mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It just means that Nucor may be a potentially interesting business to dig into and learn more about. Again, there's this paradox with the company where they have both a very sustained track record, but they're also a cyclical commodity producer. And if we go back to the global financial crisis, we can see that the company's stock price was pretty much cut in half. Looking, looking at how Nucor has performed since the COVID-19 pandemic, the business stock price has had quite the run-up, but prior to that had been pretty much flat since the global financial crisis. So, so in these cyclical industries, there are times where you can overpay even for quality businesses. So it's really going to depend if you're going to have some sort of insight into the business and some sort of special insight into the steel market overall to determine how the business is going to look more normalized going forward. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Nucor, looking at an average of their free cash flows over the last five years, and using growth assumptions to project those out into the future. So if you've done the work and you believe that those are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for Nucor, it looks like today if you were seeking a 15% rate of return from Nucor, which is what which is what Warren Buffett is ideally seeking from businesses, that a fair value for the company is around $159 per share. So that's slightly down from what their current stock price is. Again, though, Warren Buffett is seeking a margin of safety in his investments as well. And that would assume that Nucor is able to grow these currently elevated free cash flows that are included in that average and that they would maintain these current multiples going forward. Being a cyclical business, their future free cash flows may not be as predictable as some other types of businesses. And so it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Nucor. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. 
You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company and understand its underlying essence. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Nucor, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the business will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Nucor Corporation, ticker symbol NUE, NU. We looked at the business today as part of looking at dividend aristocrats and dividend kings. Nucor seems likely that they'll become a future dividend king with just one more year worth of dividend payouts. And we also looked at the business because a couple of different subscribers requested that we check out Nucor. So I'm happy to make an analysis of the company. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Nucor with me and have a great day.